Right, what we're going to have a look at is, again, simultaneous equations. This is probably like the top end of these kinds of questions. If there is a question that is just about using constant acceleration, it is likely to be this kind of thing. If it's just using the constant acceleration formula within another question, it probably won't be quite as hard as this. But you need to know how to do the hardest ones, because this might be the question that comes up on constant acceleration. So you can't just be like, oh, that's too hard. Whatever, I'm just going to ignore it. This is the hard stuff we need to make sure we can do. So this is similar to question 12. It's also going to be similar to this exam question that I'm going to ask you to have a look at as well at some point. So it says here, ball A falls vertically from rest from the top of a tower 63 metres high. At the same time as A begins to fall, another ball B is projected vertically upwards from the bottom of the tower with speed 21 metres per second. The balls collide. Find the distance of the point where the balls collide from the bottom of the tower. So there's a tower like this. A is going to fall from rest. So we know to begin with, it's not got any speed at all. And the tower's height is 63 meters. It says, at the same time as A begins to fall, another ball B is projected vertically upwards from the bottom of the tower. So B is over here, and it's being projected vertically upwards with speed 21. And it said, at the same time as A begins to fall, so the timer on the watch begins at the same time for both of them. It's not like that one we did a few examples ago where Q started one second later. They're both starting at the same time as each other. The balls collide. If they collide, I don't know where they're going to collide. Let's just guess. Maybe they collide here and here. What do you know about the times that they have been travelling for and the distances that they have travelled. So I just want you to quickly talk to the person next to you. What do you know about the times that they have travelled and the distances that they have travelled when they collide? Any ideas then about the, what we know about the time for A to travel and the time for B to travel? The times have to be equal because if they started here and here, and they're traveling, and they're going to collide, they can only collide if they've been traveling for the same amount of time. It would be so weird if one of them had been traveling longer than the other one before they collided. That wouldn't be a collision. That doesn't make any sense. So what we know, because the balls collide, they must have the same time. They also must be in the same place. That doesn't mean the same displacement. They must be in the same time and the same place because they collide with each other. So what do we know about the distance that A has travelled and the distance that B has travelled? Good. The distance that A has travelled and the distance that B has travelled must add up to 63. So I'm just going to say the distance of A plus the distance of B must be equal to 63. So we're going to do simultaneous equations with Suvat, and this time I'm going to consider what's happening to A. Because we want to get a distance that A has travelled as a positive, I'm going to make downwards the positive direction. And I probably should have put on my diagram 9.8. So why don't we say that its value of the acceleration is positive 9.8? Do we know what its value of u is? Zero. It's zero because it's just starting from rest at the beginning. Um, Arifa, what else do we know? Good. We're going to say that time is t because we know we can use the same time for the other journey. So I might even start writing down for b as well. We know that time is also going to be t. Now, for this one, I'm going to say that it's displacement, because I know that I've got something to do with displacement here. I can just call it displacement S1 if I wanted to. And I could say, that must mean the displacement from here to here 
is S1. Now for my second journey, because I'm interested in its displacement up to here, I want this number and this number to both be positive numbers so that when I add them up together, I get 63. So if I want this to be a positive number, I need to take upwards as the positive direction. So it doesn't matter if during one question you do sometimes up and sometimes down, as long as for each equation everything matches going up or matches going down. So for B, what's the acceleration? Side? Uh, minus one. Good, because upwards is positive now. And what's the value of U, Said? Uh, for B. No, it's here, the, va the value of its initial speed 21. is 21. It's being projected upwards with 21. And because it's upwards, it will stay as a positive 21. And I'm just going to call this one S2. If I wanted to, I could call it, I could call it 63 minus S1. I could call it that. I think I'm just going to keep it a little bit simpler for now and just call it S1 and S2. And then afterwards, I can add them together and I can use this thing that I've got here, OK? So the equations now that I've got for both of them, it's, it's often s equals ut plus a half at squared. So I get s1 equals, this is from s equals ut plus a half at squared. s1 equals 0 times t, which is just 0, plus a half a, which is 4.9 t squared. I'm just going to make that bit look a bit neater. That should say s1. So the first distance is just 4.9 t squared. The second distance, the displacement as well, I should say, s2 equals ut, so that's 21t, plus a half a, so that's minus 4.9, because a half of 9.8 is 4.9, s equals ut plus a half a t squared. Now this thing that we've got written at the top, that the two distances together add up to 63, means S1 plus S2 is equal to 63. So I can say that this plus this is equal to 63. So you get 4.9 t squared plus 21 t minus 4.9 t squared is equal to 63. Very conveniently here, that and that cancels out. So you get 21t is 63, which means that t is 3 seconds. Feels like we should be done. Are we done? No, we're not done because they don't care about that. They want to find out the distance of the point where the balls collide from the bottom of the tower. So do I, do I want S1 or do I want S2? I want S2. I want this one here. So I want S2. So we want S2, so I'm going to say S2 is equal to 21 times 3 minus 4.9 times 3 squared. So that will be 63 minus 4.9 times 9, which is 18.9 metres, which is 19 metres to two significant figures. So you've got one of the questions from the thing you just did is very similar to this, which is question 12. So you're going to need to use this to help you with question 12. And what I'd also like you to do for homework is to try this question that's in here. OK, so your homework is going to be the odd questions plus question 12 plus this exam question. OK. Mr. Udin, um, 